Alrighty guys, so it's the next day after the, we'll call it the orange CCKA teardown, as you guys can see, and I'm sure you can hear in the background, it's raining. And we're over here in Tent Garage 2 with the 450. <clears throat> see if I can't get, can't get this thing to start up. Did I take us to the fair last year? Yep, 2019. I was pretty sure I took us to the fair last year. This thing had a, a better seat on it, it'd be nicer too. So, since I haven't really ran it, I'm not going to check the oil. <clears throat> Gotta get the old fuel flowing through it again. Oh, running. It'll smooth out here in a minute. Raggy. Might be out of gas, I don't know. <laughs> For all I know, the tank's empty. The other thing is, this thing used to really idle really good when it used to run decent. I don't know if you guys could tell now, but basically it runs on this cylinder. That one over there has so low compression, I wonder if that's what squeals on it. It just sounds like a bearing getting ready to tighten up, but... I mean, it's done that for three, four years. So, yeah. At least wanted to make sure it would uh, <clears throat> run when I needed it. So we'll get out of here and let the, uh, the smoke clear a bit. Can't really stand outside because it's raining, but mm -hmm. metal roof. Also had to put on metal roof. Yeah. So over the course of the half hour, uh, I've just been pilling around doing uh, random stuff here, like RW3Dog wanted to see if I own an NB and a CCK head were the same bolt pattern. No, they're not. CCK is 9 bolts, I'm pretty sure, and own an NB is 10 bolts. So son of a... But anyhow, check out this fog rolling in. I mean, that's... They're pretty foggy. Trying to keep the camera out of the rain, but I'm underneath the edge of the roof here. But it's pretty foggy. Check it out. See. Just up over the house here. Even. Wow. Hmm. Well, it's actually fairly warm out too. Assuming we had snow a couple days. Anyhow, talking your guys' ears off. I'll let this fume get over here. And Still smoky in here yet. No wind today, so it's not gonna air out too good. So. Okay, next clip. So guys, it's uh, about seven o'clock at night, and it's still raining. It's never stopped raining all day, so I haven't got the I haven't got the loader out to uh, pick us on and out of here. But here I come over here and just. Make sure it's still turned and everything. Yep. It moved a little bit there. I'm trying to. Kind of hard for me to get my hand back in here and turn this thing, but. It's turning over. I kept this motor, like I said, because it'd be a good one to put on a. Uh, this would this would bolt right on any of my 800 or 8000 series or 
This could go on the 8199, but I have a B series motor down there that could go on there. So, nice thing is, I kind of have some options anymore. If I blow something up, I can put something on them. So, alright, so it's probably going to be tomorrow before I go get the loader out or anything, but I figured I'd uh, at least keep a daily update going on this thing as I'm working on it. Kind of over here staring at my 400 parts and stuff. This tractor here isn't too bad. There's some slop in the steering, but from what I remember, the pitman arm is loose on the steering box. We'll work on them kind of nitpicky little things while it's in there. So, okay, guys. Until I get this motor down, I'll catch you later. Oh, I really, I really don't want to take apart a good motor, but I don't have any options. I'm kind of out of options unless I spend some serious money rebuilding one of these one of these two blocks so maybe I'll take this the whole way apart and I, I find the same thing I found before but I'm gonna end up taking this motor apart I'm almost a hundred percent sure then uh, nice thing is I don't have to take this one the whole way apart I just have to pull the cylinder heads off and get the rods up out of the way enough to get the crank out. And, and basically flip the motor in the press and press the crank out like I did the other one. So. Okay. Two minutes and 30 seconds of video that doesn't need to be shot. So later. So I thought some of you guys might get a kick out of what I got up here because basically I have a... Pretty sure that's a 12 horsepower. Uh, yeah, that's a K301. That's a K241. Uh, that's off of 800 or 8000. That one had a blown connecting rod. Uh, I just got that for free. 67 uh, C10A. Uh, it was blown when I got it, and the crank is scored up, and so is the cylinder. I haven't done anything with that, and that's been years like 2012 I got that something like that then I got the 14 horsepower off at 432 then what I have here is a K it's a 18 horsepower overhead version uh, where are the stickers at oh yeah I think you guys can see it up there but it's a K uh, 361 yeah overhead valve motor and I got a Briggs 16 single there is a uh, P series Onan in the back. Oh, and a Robin Subaru motor off of Gravely. I kind of forgot about that. That just needs a uh, cylinder head and all the tins and stuff. And I could put that on the tractor too. Mm -hmm. need, to, need to start paying attention more for Robin parts. I kind of forget about that motor being back here. Not like there was a ton of those made, so parts aren't plentiful but uh, anyhow I figure somebody might enjoy my uh, parts motor collection now all these motors <laughs> obviously those two ran until they blew uh, the Onan in the back there the P-Series it has a broken connecting rod um, this runs and smokes this actually runs really nice I've heard it run before it come off uh, Alice Chalmers track garden tractor uh, the motor in the back also ran, but only ran on one cylinder because the valve guide pulled out of the head and held the valve open. And this Briggs also runs really nice. Same with the Zone and Twin I have down here, but when it, maybe one day I'll build the, uh, what is it, uh, 81, 8162T is a manual, it would have been manual lift. The hood's laying up here. Yeah. You guys can see that. All kinds of parts. Keep a lot of my spare spare stuff over here. Parts you think you never use and will use. But uh, I got the CCK out for the 450 and the 450 is out of here. So I'm going to drop them two things in the project bay and probably call it an afternoon. Not working too hard. So, later guys. Hopefully the last time this thing has a squeal. So Shut her off, pull the other motor in behind it, and see what we can do here. 
So guys, out here with the 450 today. And I'm still trying to figure out what I uh, <clears throat> what I want to do here. Um, so uh, what I think I'm going to do is I'll put this up on YouTube shortly after the first first video and uh, CCKA tear apart and just see what you guys want to see. Do you guys want to see motor two here tore apart? And the crank out of this put in a known good motor. Or you guys are looking in the light, I'm sorry. Or do you guys want to see motor one run and see if it smokes or not? I mean I'm kind of curious. I personally think it's gonna smoke, so I'm thinking what I'm gonna do, and obviously I brought the motor over here for a reason, not just for my health. Um, actually my back hurt pretty good that day after doing this even though I uh, used the front end loader to move it but um, motor ran good no noise no noticeable smoke anyhow so pretty much swapped the uh, the red tins with the yellow tins and I could even put the yellow oil pan on it I wouldn't have to paint as much I still have to paint the block and stuff but uh, in reality, all I really have to do to this motor, I say all, I mean really it's about a, you're doing about three quarter, maybe most of the work you'd be doing to rebuild it, but you just have to pull the cylinder heads off, the tins, and the flywheel, the front bearing enclosure, and the uh, timing, uh, timing gear cover in the back and then I do the same thing and press the cranks out and obviously I'd have to do it to both of these motors um, and then just put the crank back in and drop the timing gears back on or line the timing gears up and put them back on however you want to look at it and uh, yeah then we'd be rolling so you guys I, I think that's the direction I'm going to go I was going to ask you guys what I'm going to do but Pretty much regardless, the motor needs to come off of the 450 either way. Either motor needs a crank, so I can tear that apart without too much too much fuss, and then I can take it apart with the crank out, and I can look at everything real good. And the other thing I want to do is I want to run this motor off the transmission once and see if it still makes that noise. You know, just making sure it's not the uh, transmission for some weird reason. I doubt it, but stranger things have happened, so. Okay. So, I think I'm going to work on that today. I don't know that I'm going to videotape taking this motor off and taking it apart. I put a grand total of maybe three hours on it since I had it apart in 2018. Uh, it went to the fair last year. 2019 but uh, I'm sure I've mowed with it some but not not plentiful with it still making that noise so okay enough of me bullshitting again let me get a little bit of work done I haven't really been out in the shop here lately just haven't really had the motivation to if I know if I take this apart I'm gonna be spending a little bit of well definitely some time and if not some some money in it somewhere there's always that, that one piece you don't have that you have to go and buy or something so I, I should be okay I think that's when you find out they had a special bolt set up to bolt it to the 400 but I don't think so swap the crank and the adapter plates to the other block and it should be good so okay let me quit jabber John unhook the fuel line and stuff and let me get moving. Okay guys, so I got the usual going on. I got the uh, 450 up on locks and uh, 2x4 on either side. The motor is basically ready to come off. I got one bolt holding it right now. I'm going to get the camera out. Show pulling it off. Basically I'm just going to take and sit it down on this bucket I got right here. 
if you guys can hear the helicopters flying over. I'm assuming probably so. I don't know why they're flying over. The easiest to get to you, Bolton. Still a pain. There we go. See if I can't drop this motor. I know these are put together, they're really heavy. Taking them apart, they don't seem as bad. So, the only thing I'm worried about would be something like the. Uh, choker throttle cable it's trying to whip at me but there we go we'll hold it up by the exhaust pipes I guess oh it didn't make too much of a mess still a little bit of oil around now Just a little bit though, not too bad. And this transmission was full on oil. It would have been nice to go up two two by fours. So what do we got going on in here? Everything looks really good. I wonder if this thing has uh Take you guys off the stand a second. Hold on. Like I said, got everything off. Everything in here looks really... Looks nice and tight. Not really an extreme amount of wear, near as I can tell. Gasket's even intact. No, gasket's... No, there is no gasket. It had gasket maker on it, I guess. So I'll have to apply some of that when I put it back together. So, I'm still pretty sure, though, that the, the motor is the problem on this. Let's see if I can. That joke's on, by the way, too. One side, you can definitely hear air coming out the breather tube. So, so do I just drop the oil pan off and take it apart? I can't remember. How does the oil pan work on one of these? Okay, you guys got to remember. I took the oil pan off of this motor two years ago. I don't think the oil pan's threaded. I'm pretty sure the block is. Yeah. Through holes so the bolts go up through the bottom. So. Get the shrouds off. Get the oil pan off. Get the flywheel off. Starter off. Uh, starter will come off with the oil pan. And then, uh. Then I can get working on this thing. Cause look for the low amount of hours I had on this, the oil was pretty dark in it. 
Actually, I ran this thing. <laughs> I about blew this motor up. After I put it back together, I ran it. I forgot I honed the cylinders in it. Uh, the video of using the 450, I mowed the rest of the field with it that day. Uh, I got the whole way down to the bottom of the field. The oil light came on, didn't think nothing of it because it had been coming on. And, uh, yeah. She about didn't know it exist anymore. Would have been a boat anchor then and probably wrecked the crank, so I'm glad I didn't. So I stopped, put some oil in it. Drove it around some more, used it. So, okay. Like I said, tear it apart, get the crank out, bring you guys back if I find anything interesting. Then I get to go from, from there. I get to do it again. It's like I've done this three times now. I should get pretty good at switching cranks. Mm hmm. It's about an hour and a half later here, and I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm down to the bolts are loose in the oil pan. I just got to pick the motor up up off of it, and take the connecting rods out and the pistons, and then I can take the bearing bearing cap out over here which is in the dark side of the moon you guys can't see and then take the snap ring off of there and the big flat washer and then I'll be ready to uh, press that crank out of there uh, I gotta look and I don't know if the oil pumps actually in the road or not I mean might be able to leave it on there but <clears throat> if I remember right I took the oil pump out just so I didn't when the uh, bend it or smash it on anything and I don't know if this oil pumps it's got to be kind of good but I wonder if it's what caused my problems in the first place but I don't know can't confirm can't deny guys so again I'll come back to you I haven't been showing you guys doing too much I just kind of want to get this done uh, I mean right now I got a grand total of an hour and a half and tearing this motor down this far so uh, pulled the crank gear, which I kind of forgot about. Uh, it wasn't too awful bad. I uh, took the torch, heated it up, wound the puller up, and then let the torch just sit on it while I kept uh, hammering on it with the impact, and they come, they come right off compared to the uh, 67 430 I had all them problems with. So, Okay, let me get this done, get this thing over in the press, get it the whole way apart, and then make up my mind. I want to tear this one the whole way down too because maybe I'll just wait and do that tomorrow. So, okay, let me get it done, guys. Okay, up on the bench. That went pretty smoothly, I think, considering. So, again, like before, I don't see any red flags, but who knows. Like I said, that oil pump's really not in the road. It's just if it would happen to fall over here and bend it. So, I don't know, make up my mind on that. I guess if I'm not going to use that oil pump, it don't matter, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, let me get the rods out of this thing. See where we go from there. Alright guys, so when I tore the 450 motor the whole way apart, it looked like on video I didn't, or I didn't show any video of it on video. And if you look up in here, you can definitely see the cam pretty good, which I think I did before. I not really see anything. Um, that right hand piston there looks pretty tore up. I haven't looked at the bores, except for what I'm doing right now, you guys can see the heavy Looks like there's some pretty good. Huh? Can't feel anything with my finger. So let's go over here to door number two, which was actually door number one. Ooh. Baby, is that one tore up looking? I think you guys can see it down in there or something. It's tore up looking. Yeah, I can definitely feel. Feel some ridges in that one. That's weird because that, uh, that was the cylinder I didn't think was doing it. Maybe I never took his side apart. I don't know. I don't remember what I did to be honest with you guys. Because I didn't put it on video. But 
Oh well. Oh yeah, look at. Can you guys see that in there? Check the red rash out there. Boy, she was dragging hard. I don't know why. These CCKAs seem like they're famous for it. It's like the pistons are too short. They should have a long, a long piston in them, like the, uh, like the L's have. Like yo, like over there sitting up. Got a long piston like that. I don't think it would be a problem. So, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the uh, bearing enclosure plate off. I gotta find a set of snap ring pliers. Uh, they're out in my truck, so I gotta walk the way out front to get them. So maybe I'll take the crank out after dinner or something like that, and we'll uh, we'll call it a wrap for tonight with that sort of mess going on. But uh, that's that's what I see. I see that the pistons were messed up. Well, I guess I stand it back up now and turn it over by hand, but hands are still oily yet. So, all right, let me do what I said I was gonna do, and then we'll proceed over to the press. If I see or find anything interesting while I'm screwing with this, I'll let you guys know. Alrighty guys, while well, you guys haven't seen the first one yet, I'm going to do this one from this side, that way you guys can see the crank. So, see what happens here. See how tight this one is. This one I haven't heated at all, the other one I did heat once, so. See, they go, they're a little snug. Okay, just fill up. I did that one all in one push. How come that worked? Pretty sure. Let me double check. There it is loose. There we go. Got it, coach. Oh, I guess you can't see it there. Darn it. Got it, coach. So, same routine as last time. I'm going to back you guys up a little bit. Just a little bit. A little bit of room to work. So, this crank especially I don't want to drop. Because I need this crank. The other crank I didn't need so much. So, I don't know if I can get it to go back up in the bearing journal. Actually did it the wrong way because it needs to go up this side. But... Got it. Crank looks good. And it looked pretty good in the block. Crank looks good, the gear come off alright. Can't tell, is that is that main bearing correct? Or is that supposed to have a split in it? I'll have to look at the other one. I don't think it has a split in it like that. Washer can or washer, yeah. The uh, shim shim come out with the crank. I don't know if that's the only shim it had in it, but it's what I got. So, uh, I gotta find a clean place to, uh, to sit this down. You know, maybe I'll, I'll flip the, the block back up on the bench and we'll see if we can't see them cam bearings up in there and see if that was it or not, or if it was something with this crank. Who knows, but I don't see anything handy yet anyhow so uh yeah 
there's that tear apart saga basically. Like I said, let me find a place. Can't even shut the camera off right now. Look at this. Maybe I can do it with the tip of my pinky. So guys, here's the difference between a 450 crank and a 816 or a 817 crank. And the main difference is out here on the transmission end. This is what they consider a step gear. Whoops. About dropped the camera. My hands are still oily, but uh anyhow the step down, this goes in the uh the bushing in the high low planetary. This is where the gear rides. This is where the oil seal rides. It's actually a little bit worn on this one. Which of course on the crank you want to use. I'm gonna take some sandpaper and clean that up best I can. It's a little bit worn. Anyhow. And this is the uh, the main journal bearing surfaces back here, and then obviously connecting rods, main bearing, and this one has the gear washer and snap ring here, and then uh, oil seal and timing cover, and then obviously the flywheel sits out here, and that's the same between both of them. So, there you go guys, there's tearing apart some motors. You guys can see why the 450 actually has a longer, longer area here. Kind of strange. I'm actually I'm I'm standing here and I I'm seeing some subtle differences between these. To me, well maybe I'm just crazy. Because it looked like to me that these were bigger over here. They're definitely shaped different. Is it because I got it flipped? No, they should be flipped so they're sitting the same. Yeah. Now, see that one's got a big hole board out of it though. Where this one does not, so. See how much they've had to balance that? Where are you guys looking at? There you go. See how much, how big of a hole they had to make to balance that? So that's the. Uh, that's a difference there, but only one way to find out. Put it together and see what happens. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't made up my mind which motor I'm going to do yet. I'm thinking I'm going to go through all this work. <laughs> I might as well go for number three and tear this one apart and see what's going on in there. I don't really want to, but there's no other way to get the... I don't think you can get the crank out without taking the pistons out the whole way. I don't think. Uh, just not the way the CCKAs are set up. You can't you can't do that because the rods actually float on the inside. So if you're pressing on them, you'd happen to catch them and then break them and blah. It's not worth the risk. So okay, how long was I been being unprofessional recording the camera string and stuff? Uh -huh. Okey see what's. Look inside this block a little bit more. The other thing I wanted to look at was, oh yeah, this is a two-piece bearing. No, it's not. It's actually not, guys. Oh, well, you can't see it in this one because of the oil. I think you guys can see it there. See it going across there? Get over here to this one. Here, as I can tell, well, I don't know, it is. It's just a lot harder to see. I can see it. I don't know if you guys can. Yeah, you guys can see the split there in the middle, so. It's about the same. I about dropped the camera again, so. Alrighty, that's going to be it for now. I'm going to go in for dinner. Later, guys. A little bit dark without that light here, ain't it? Mm-hmm.